You're watching Destiny Church. Live your call, fulfill your destiny. Father, we just want to thank you, God, for this wonderful afternoon, Lord God, that we could spend time with you in your word, in worship, in your presence, Lord. Lord, we just commit everything to you, Lord God, even as we begin this new series. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Praise God. Let's give a clap to the Lord once again. Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to Destiny Church. No, just in case this is your first time joining us, please type the word first over the comment section, uh, whether you are uh, watching us via YouTube or Facebook. No, welcome po sa inyong lahat. No, we are so delighted to have you here. Join us this afternoon. No, by the way, my name is Pastor Carlo Panlilio, no, and I'm the senior pastor of uh, Destiny Church. Me and my wife, Shaleen, we have been pastoring Destiny for the last 23 years, and we are just so happy that you could join us today. And for those of you that are regulars with us, no, again, welcome po sa inyong lahat. Praise God. No, uh, Today, no, I would like to uh, start off on a brand new series. No, we just finished our series about the family. No, alam niyo po, one of the things that I love to do as a pastor is I love doing weddings. No, and there are, no, there are two things that I really look forward to with every wedding that I get to officiate. Number one is when I uh, get to introduce the bride. No, gusto gusto ko po yung part na yon. Uh, Ladies and gentlemen, let us all rise as we welcome the bride. And and sakto po biglang bubuka sometimes yung curtain or yung pinto. Tapos papasok po yung bride in all her beauty and splendor and purity. I, I just I just simply love doing that, no? And and the second thing that I really love to do in the wedding is you no know, at the end. So I I love when we are about to begin yun nga, you know, basically uh calling in the bride, welcoming the bride. No? And at the same time, I love no, when I'm about to close. No? Uh, it is at that moment when I get to say, for example, no, uh, uh, ladies and gentlemen, no, I would like to present to you Mr. and Mrs. Kunyari, no? Mr. and Mrs. Juan and Ana de la Cruz. No? And then I get to say, Kunyari uh, no, Juan, you may now kiss the bride. And, and, and I think everyone, naman siguro, no, if, you, if you have attended a wedding, no, everyone is basically anticipating that. Everyone is looking forward to that beautiful ending. No? Kung baga parang, uh, the climax of the wedding is at that moment when you get to finally say, no, you may now kiss the bride. And everyone is excited. Everyone is cheering. Everyone is you know, just having fun. No? Because... No, that kind of ending, no, those kinds of endings are basically beautiful. Okay? And interestingly, no, the coming of Jesus Christ is compared, no, it, no, the, 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 the illustration that we see in the Bible no, is that the second coming of Jesus Christ, the end of the world as we know it, is compared to a wedding feast. Jesus Christ himself being the groom and he will be wedded or he will be married to the church okay, which is the bride of Christ no? and, and inisip ko no, bakit, bakit of all the things that uh, can be used as an analogy for the second coming e ginamit isang kasalan and, you know, when you talk about weddings weddings are beautiful, weddings are fun weddings are, are exciting okay? and that is basically what Jesus used no, to uh, illustrate no, his second coming or the end of the world. No? Uh, and so today, pag-uusapan natin yun. No? We're, going to, uh, we're going to launch this new series entitled Endgame. And for this specific Sunday, no, I have entitled it Endgame, okay? A Great Encouragement. Endgame, A Great Encouragement. First of all, since we're going to talk about the end of the world, no, I would like to uh, I would like to start off with a poll. Okay, so, sige, magpapa poll po tayo dito sa Zoom, sa Facebook, sa kasay YouTube, no. Are you ready to uh, answer this poll? No, lahat po gusto ko po participate, no. Okay, first of all, 
okay? Do you think we are nearing the end of the world? Yan, no? Kindly ask this question. Do you think we are nearing the end of the world? We have four choices. Oo, hindi pa, hindi ko alam, o wala akong pakialam. Sige nga, go ahead. I want you to answer that poll right now. Okay? Oh, okay. A lot of, ba, no? A lot of people are saying here na ano, uh, yes, we are, we are, you know, dito, dito sa, wait, Okay, ayan, sige po, sagot na po, no? Okay? About 80% are saying here at Zoom that, ano, that we are nearing the end of the world. Ayun, bumaba, 50 na lang. Yung hindi pa, 25%. At merong 25% din naman na hindi sila sigurado o hindi nila alam. Okay? Second question, no? How do you feel about the thought of the end of the world? Yun nga, when you think about the end of the world, Okay. What are your thoughts about this? Are you excited? Letter A. Are you fearful? Or wala lang? No, letter C. Okay. Okay, about 56% according to the poll are excited. No, about 44% are fearful. While yung wala namang nagsabi na wala silang nararamdaman about this. No, So, f almost 50-50 po. No? Some are excited about the thought of the end of the world while others are fearful. And finally, my last question for our poll. No? Ito, magandang tanong to. Do you think you are ready? Just in case lang. No? Uh, we can't really say whether, yun nga, kanina sabi no iba, they believe malapit na, no? we are entering the end of the world, no? we are already starting. Okay? Iba naman sabi, hindi pa naman siguro, but we, we, I'm not saying we are, I'm not saying we are not. No, but just in case we are, no, just in case where it happens, no, how many of you think you are actually ready? Okay. Well, based on our Zoom poll, no, sabi dito, uh, 67% believe that they're ready. That's good. No, nobody, na dun sa no, walang nagsabi na hindi sila ready. Pero merong 30% who are not sure whether they are ready for the end of the world or whether... No. Ah, uh, no, they are prepared for the coming of Christ. Yan. Okay, praise God, no. You know, interestingly when you talk about the end of the world, just nga naiisip natin gloom and doom. No, we think about we think about uh, we think about it in terms of for example, a zombie apocalypse, no, a nuclear war or uh, Yun nga, basically the destruction of all life okay but you know the early christians no teka lang i-move ko lang tong aking poll may luma, may mga sumasagot pa no the early christians long for christ coming okay in fact they even prayed for it i'm not so sure how many of us no are actually excited about the thought of jesus coming in other words the end of the world okay no, pero yung mga unang mga mana ng palataya, not only were they conscious about the possibility that the end was going to come, no. They were longing for it. They desired it. They were looking forward to it. No, they they were they were anticipating it. They were in fact even praying for it. No, allow me to read for example, no, in the book of Revelation chapter 22, verse 70 to 20 verses 17 and 20. Sabi dito, the spirit and the, the bride say, come. So they're actually inviting no, Jesus to come now. No, let, the, let the world end. Lord, come. Okay, the spirit and the bride say, come. Let the one who hears it say, come. And let the one who is thirsty come. No, Let the one who desires to take water of life without price. And in verse 20, sabi po dyan, he who testifies to this thing, surely I am coming soon. And then the church says, no, sabi dito, Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. So Jesus promises here that I'm coming soon. And how did the church respond? Amen. Come on, Lord. Oh, the word here that was used is Maranatha. You know, come, Lord Jesus. Come now. Okay. So, ano makikita natin dito, no? When the Bible talks about the second coming or what no, you know we have dubbed it as the end game, the end of days, the end of the world, 
it is not used to frighten people, but rather as a source of hope and encouragement. Okay? Much like what Paul wrote in his letter to the to the to the Thessalonians. No, I want us to read right now First Thessalonians chapter four, verse thirteen. In the ESV version, sabi po dito, But we do not want you to be uninformed, brothers and sisters, about those who are asleep, that you may not grieve as others who have no hope. For since we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so through Jesus, God will bring with him those who have fallen asleep. For this we declare to you a word from the Lord. That we who are alive, who are left until the coming of the Lord, will not precede those who have fallen asleep. Verse 16, For the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a cry of command, with the voice of an archangel, with the sound of a trumpet of God, and the dead in Christ will rise first. Then we who are alive, who are left, will be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so we will always be with the Lord. Now look at the last, the last verse in verse 18. Sabi dito, Therefore, encourage one another with these words. <laughs> so, the early church, no, even si Paul, no, used the idea of Christ coming or the second coming or the end of the world not to frighten the church, not for us to, no, to, uh, to be fearful, not for us to go into panic mode. But interestingly, ginami ito po ito to encourage. And I think a lot of people are confused with the end of the world. Eh? And that's why it is so important for us to understand the doctrine of Christ coming. No? What is really the end game? What is the end of the world? What does it mean for us, yung second coming ni Christ? No? Kasi kadalasan na-associate nga to sa apocalypse, takot, armageddon, no wars, famines, pestilence, no? yeah, especially with what we are experiencing right now. Itong COVID-19 pandemic. And, it, and no? just when we think, no? just when we were hoping that it was going to get better with the vaccines and all, apparently, parang it seems to even get worse. No, parang now we can see that no, there's a new variant and we're not really sure whether <coughs> the vaccines no, are able to work or not. And, and, and so there's a lot of confusion, there's a lot of uncertainty, a lot more people are getting sick and people are actually dying. And so katalasan ang na-instill niyan, fear, takot, uncertainty. No? But interestingly, Paul and the early church used no, the second coming of Christ to encourage each other. Sabi nga ni Paul, encourage each other with this verse. No? Just a little bit of background. No? Ito pong uh, Thessalonians was written by Paul as a letter to the church of Thessalonica. No, nangyari po was uh, Paul planted his church. But then because of some opposition and persecution, Si Paul had to leave immediately, okay? So hindi niya talaga natutukan itong uh, Thessalonians, no? And uh, no, he had to he had to go immediately because his life was being threatened. Okay? Later on, pinadala niya si Timothy to actually check on the status of the believers that he had left in in Thessalonica. Okay? And he was surprised to know that, no, the church was actually continuing. Okay? Thus, nung sa sunod na pagbalik ni, no, ni, ni, ni Timothy, no, nag, ni Titus, no, nagpadala siya ng letter to encourage no, the church in Thessalonians. Now, it is interesting to note that the major theme of his letter to the Thessalonians has to do with the second coming of Christ. Check this out. No, the first Thessalonians is composed of five chapters. Each chapter ends no, with an encouragement about the second coming of Christ. No? Tingnan nyo lang po ito, no? just to give us a better picture. 1 Thessalonians chapter 1, verse 10. So, the first chapter ends with verse 10. And they speak of how you are looking forward to the coming of God's Son from heaven, Jesus whom God raised from the dead. He is the one who has rescued us from the terrors of the coming judgment. Did, hey, did you just get what Paul was saying? Sabi dito, they speak of how you are 
looking forward. In other words, no, the Thessalonians, inaabangan nila. No, kailan ba dating si Lord? They're excited. They're not like, kailan ba dating si Lord? No, no, no. But, but it's something that they're looking forward to. Just like, yun nga, I guess, just like when when uh, the people at the, the the guest of the wedding are looking forward no, to that declaration, no, no, uh, may I now present to you Mr. and Mrs., etc. You may now kiss the bride. It's something to look forward to. Chapter 2, no? 1 Thessalonians chapter 2, and it ends in verses 19 and 20. Check this out. For who is our hope, our joy, no, or crown of exaltation? Is it not even you in the presence of our Lord at His coming? For you are our glory and our joy. Again, no, Paul talks about no, the coming of Jesus. Sabi niya, what is our exaltation and our joy? No, and, and he's looking forward to that day when Jesus is going to come. No, and, and believing that to mga believers na to, this is our fruit, this is our glory and our joy. No, then chapter three. And may the Lord cause you to increase and abound in love for one another and for all people, just as we also do for you so that He may establish your hearts without blame in the holiness before our God and Father at the coming of the Lord Jesus with all His saints. So now Paul talks about something practical. No? He was saying about, uh, he was telling us how to live our lives no? as we anticipate that. Sabi niya, okay, increase and abound in love for one another okay, no? and, and also to establish the hearts without blame. In other words, to walk in holiness before God at the coming of the Lord Jesus. Of course, we already read chapter 4. Inasa natin kanina, that was my opening verse. And then, finally, in chapter 5, no, verse 23 to 24, Paul says, Now may the God of peace Himself sanctify you entirely. And may your spirit and soul and the body be preserved complete, without blame, at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Faithful is He who calls you and he also will bring it to pass. Wow. I don't know about you but no that that sounds really really encouraging knowing that no as no as the church no as as you are to walk blameless before the Lord. God is faithful who has called us. Right? And he will bring it to pass. No? And that's why Ganun na lang yung anticipation, ganun na lang yung excitement ng mga early Christians at the coming of Jesus Christ. They, they, they were excited about the end times. They were excited about the end games. No? And yun nga, katulad ng nabanggit kanina dun sa chapter 4, no? sabi dun, encourage one another with this thing. No? When, when we are when the sound of the trumpet will blast, the sound of the trumpet will blast, no? and we will meet Jesus in the clouds. No? Uh, the, the, the Christian world calls this doctrine, the doctrine of the rapture, where those who are alive will, will be taken up. No? We will not experience death. And those who are already dead will rise up in Christ. And in sabay sabay daw na katatagpuin natin ang Diyos no? in, in, the, in the clouds. No? And sabi nga ni Paul dito, encourage one another with these things. Okay. Now the question is, how does the second coming of Christ an encouragement to us? Yung nga eh, no? How does the idea of the end of the world, no, some, no, something that we can look forward to, rather than, uh, rather than dread, no? Ay mag maguguna wala man mundo. Paano naman ako may excite no? Hindi ba, hindi ba usually matatakot kanon? Okay. But then again, yun nga, sabi dito, that we should encourage each one with this. No? Several reasons why I believe Jesus' coming is actually an encouragement. Number one, it's not the end after all. No, yes, the title of our series is Endgame. But then again, it's not the end after all. Okay? You look back at 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 13 to 14. Basahin po natin na. Let the word of God speak to you. And now, dear brothers and sisters, we want you to know what will happen to the believers who have died so you will not grieve like people who have no hope. Now, 
some, there's something interesting about what Paul was saying. No, okay? he wants you to know this fact. He doesn't want you to be ignorant. No? In another translation, sabi nga, we don't want you to be uninformed. It's so, imp- no? it's so important that you are well informed about this reality. Otherwise, ang mangyayari is that no, we will end up grieving like people who have no hope. No? And, and you know, I, 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 when you die without, without Jesus, when you die without God in your life, then everything is simply united. And sin. I think that is that is tragic. That that is that is bad. No, but then you don't have to die without hope. And that and then so you mga naiwan sabi dito. We don't have to grieve as much. No, look at verse 14. For since we believe that Jesus died and was raised up to life again, we also believe that when Jesus returns, God will bring back with Him the believers who have. In other words, it's not the end after all. No? You know, in this pandemic, I've been, I've been seeing a lot of my friends losing someone to COVID. No, parang almost every day when I turn up my news feed, no, people die. And, and of course, no, you feel bad, you grieve. But then sabi dito, you don't have to grieve no we no as if there's no hope because there is hope because the promise of resurrection no look at the the passion translation sabi dito beloved brothers and sisters same verse we want you to be quite certain about this truth i want you to highlight that word certain about this truth in other words you can anchor your life on this this is a reality. This is not just a thought. This is not just a hope. But there is a certainty in it. May, sa Tagalog, may kasiguraduhan. Uh, no? Saan daw tayo sigurado? Concerning those who have passed away. Yung mga mahal natin sa buhay na namatay na. So that you won't be overwhelmed with grief like many others who have no hope. Verse 14. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, you know the resurrection of Christ, we also believe that God will bring them, God will bring with Jesus those who died while believing in Him. It's not the end. It's not the end after all. In John chapter 11, verse 25 to 26, no, I was reminded of this verse. Jesus said to Martha, Eh, sabi ni Lord, no, this is right after Lazarus died. And if you know the story, no, si Martha sa kasi si Lazarus magkapatid sila, eh, and uh, and sabi dito ni, ni Jesus, no, I am the resurrection and the life. The one who believes in me will live even though they die. Did you get that? The one who believes in me will live. In other words, it's not the end. <laughs> even though they die and whoever lives believing in me will never die and ang ganda nung tanong ni Lord kay Martha do you believe this? I wanna ask that question to to you do you really believe this? do you believe that Jesus is the resurrection and the life? if you believe this wow no? may encourage ka talaga Hindi ka matatakot mamatay. Hindi ka matatakot dun sa kaibigan mong mamamatay. Because there is hope if we believe in Jesus. No, in 2 Peter chapter 2 verse 3 to 11 in the message translation. Since everything here today might well be gone tomorrow. And how many of you that <laughs> no, parang no that, that that is just become a reality for for many people, for many of us. No? Those who are here today, no, for all you know, they're already gone tomorrow. No, but I, I've been hearing some friends, no, pinasok lang last night or isang araw, kapapasok lang sa emergency, and hindi na umabot, no, uh, nilagay sa ER. In the following day, wala na. No, gone tomorrow. Okay? And then sabi dito, do you see how essential it is to live a holy life? Daily expect the day of God, eager for its arrival. The galaxies will burn and the elements melt down that day. But we'll hardly notice. We'll be looking the other way. Ready for the promised new heavens and new earth. All landscape with righteousness. Okay? 
Yun eh. It's not the end after all. Ang, ang ganda nung sinabi dito ni Peter, sabi niya, we'll not even notice it. Because our hearts will be what? Will, will be focused, will be so in tune with, with the promise of God that no, despite the problems and the chaos, no, nakatuon ka lang dun sa pangako ng Diyos of new heavens and new earth. Okay? It's not the end after all. Pakalawa, bakit nakaka-encourage yung thought ng second coming? No? The hope of a beautiful reunion. The hope of a beautiful reunion. Look at no, 1 Thessalonians again, this time reading from verse 17. Okay? Then together with them, we who are still alive and remain on earth will be caught up in the clouds to meet the Lord in the echo. Sino ito tinutukoy na together with them? If you look at verse 16, sabi dito, yun nga, the dead in Christ will rise. Those who have passed before us. Now, guess what? No, Not only are they going to be resurrected, but then we will meet them. If, if, if ever you're still alive at the coming of Jesus, what's going to happen is we're going to meet each other. There's going to be a grand reunion. Kanina, when I was... When I was uh, thinking more about, about this, no, I, I was reminded of my dad. My dad uh, passed on to eternity a couple of years ago, I think about three or four years ago. And, and just the thought of seeing him again excites me, it encourages me. Alam niyo, masakit mawala ng kaibigan, ng kamag-anak, ng mahal sa buhay. In fact, uh, uh, just, just you know, yesterday or today, no, yeah, yesterday, no, one of our good friends, no, uh, ni Pastor Olive kaibigan namin, no, we were surprised. She was, she was gone. Yun nga eh, she, she succumbed to COVID. No, she was brought to the emergency and the following day, she was no more. And though I feel sad and like, wow, that was quick. Ang sarap lang na malaman na, you know what? I will get to see her again. I will get to see my dad. You're gonna get to see, no? But but hey, by the way, there's a condition. Those who believe in Christ. That's why it's so important that people come to know the Lord. Jesus is our hope. Hey, don't alala ko kanina in the morning service, but uh, I think uh, in the processing time, Pastor Olive mentioned this. No, death is sure, but heaven is real, and Jesus is our hope. Death is sure. We're all gonna die. <laughs> but heaven is real. And when we talk about heaven is real, you know, we get to see our, our dead loved ones and be together and reunited with them. No? By that time, mak- mak- uh, makakapiling ko rin yung dalawa naming anak. Lima anak ko eh. No? Tatlo buhay. May dalawang na miscarriage. No? <laughs> and I'm excited to finally get to know my kids. I don't even know whether they're, 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 no? it's a boy or a girl. Eh? Pero yun, the hope of a grand reunion. No? Sabi dito, Then we will, be f- we will be with the Lord forever. So encourage each other with these words. Okay? Actually, this morning, uh, I woke up with a song playing in my head. No? This song by Stephen Curtis Tapman. Sabi nung lyrics ng song, I hold your hand and watch as the sun slowly fades away. Far in the distance, the Father is calling your name. So it talks about, you know, there's a person dying. And it's time for you to go home. And everything in me wants to hold on. But I'm letting you go with this goodbye kiss and this promise. And the chorus says, I'll see you in a little while. I'll see you in a little while. You know? And that's the hope of Jesus coming. You know? I'll see you in a little while. That's why sabi ni Paul, encourage one another with these words. No, I don't know about you. No, now, I'm, I'm already encouraged. Okay? I'll see you in a little while, sabi ng song. Number three. It finally ends. No, so yes, no, it is an ending. But it is a beginning. It's not the end after all. It is a grand reunion. But also, it finally ends with and they lived happily ever after. Okay? How many of you love fairy tales? How many of you love the idea? As a child, no? Binabasa natin yun and 
every ending of fairy tales, no? Uh, end with, and they live happily ever after. And then we are told, uh, that's not really true. Okay? No, hindi naman talaga totoo that people live happily ever after. But you know what? You know why we desire that? Why we long for that? Because there's a part in us no, that believes that somehow that is true. Okay? And it, yes, it is true. Revelations chapter 2, chapter 21, verses 3 to 4. No, the book of Revelations, the last book of the Bible, talks about yun nga. No, this, this uh, end of days, the second coming of Christ. I heard a loud shout from the throne saying, Look, God's home is now with His people. He's finally with us. He will live with them. And they will be His people. God Himself will be with them. And in verse 4, sabi dyan, He will wipe away every tear from their eyes. And there will be no more death or sorrow or crying or pain. All these things are gone forever. Don't we, don't we desire that? Isn't it true that deep inside we crave for such a time? The idea that you know, there will be no more tears. That's how God will wipe away all your tears. There will be no more pain, no more sickness, no more death, no more COVID. We don't have to be scared. Okay? No more no more pain no anong kasama sa pain no more no more breakups no hindi naiiyak si LJ Reyes sa paghihiwalay nila ni Paolo Conte wala na yun <laughs> diba wala nang ganong lasting pain no all these things are gone forever diba <laughs> who's encouraged I am encouraged you should be because a second coming is not it's not frightening. It's not scary. It's not doom. It finally ends with a happily ever after. Jesus would wipe away every tear. Nung papawiin niya daw lahat ng luha, wala nang luha, wala nang tatangis, wala nang iiyak, walang sakit, walang kamatayan. Okay. And then there was another song that was playing in my mind. No, You know that song? I can only imagine. I can. Only, I wish I could sing the song. But I can only imagine what it would be like when I walk by your side. No? Do you know the song, Sam? No. I can only imagine what my eyes would see when your face, when Jesus' face is before me. No, I feel surrounded by your glory. What will my heart feel? Will I dance for you, Jesus, or in awe of you be still? No. Will I stand in your presence or to my knees? Will I fall? Will I sing hallelujah? No. Will I be able to speak it all? I can only imagine. Okay. Well, right now we could just imagine it. So, we are encouraged. Now, ang tanong, and I'll end with this, no? What are we encouraged no, to do? Okay, yes, we are encouraged. But encouraged for what? Encouraged to do what? Allow me to give you four or five things. Number one, we are encouraged to persevere. What's susuko? No? We're encouraged to persevere. To persevere means to endure despite the hardship, despite the suffering. No? We are encouraged not to give up. Don't give up. No? To continually overcome. Look at Matthew chapter 24, verse 19 to 13. No, and, and Jesus talks about the suffering. No, he doesn't mince words. No, he tells us what's really going to happen. Then you will be arrested as a believer. That's gonna happen. You'll be arrested, persecuted, and killed. You'll be hated all over the world because you are my followers. And many will turn away from me and betray and hate each other. And many false prophets will appear and will deceive many people. Yan kami, mga false prophets na, no? Eh? False Bible teachers, no? And then, sabi the verse 12, and sin will be rampant everywhere. Sin is going to abound. And, 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 and this is what I don't like. Sabi then, the love of many will grow cold. No? Sin will be rampant. Evil will be rampant. And people's love will grow cold. But verse 13, here's, here's an encouragement. But to the one who endures to the end will be saved. The one who endures till the end. In other words, no, don't give up. Persevere till the end Jesus promises that you will be saved Revelations 2 verse 26 in the NASB version of the Bible 
He who overcomes. That's actually one of the major themes of the book of Revelations, which is what? You know, the last book of the Bible, the end of days. He who overcomes. Ilang beses yan binanggit no? sa, sa, sa Revelations. He who overcomes and he who keeps my deeds until the end. Until the end, tapusin natin to. No? Don't you lose your faith. Not now, not tomorrow. Hold on till the end. Kapit lang, kapit. Huwag susuko. Huwag bibitaw sa pananampalataya. Yes, mahirap. Sometimes may doubts. Sometimes we can't really explain it. No? Like, God, why, why me? Why, why, why has she died? Why has my mother died or no? why did I suffer? We don't understand. But at the same time, you, you persevere, you hold on. Sabi, ito promise ng Lord, to Him I will give authority over the nations. In Hebrews 10.23, sabi to you, let us hold tightly without wavering to the hope we affirm for God can be trusted to keep His promise. You know what? God is faithful. No? He is eh? He will keep His promise to us. So stand firm. Okay? Persevere. Sabihin mo nga, persevere. Persevere. Lord, I will persevere. No, endure. Not give up. Stand firm. Pangalawa, what are we encouraged to do? Hindi lang basta na-encourage, okay, you feel good. No, no. You're encouraged to keep on doing good. Nga, evil will be rampant. So what do we do? Do we just go along with what everyone is doing? No, no. We keep on doing what is good. Galatians chapter 6, verse 9 to 10. So let us not get tired of doing what is good. Huwag ka daw mapagod. Huwag ka daw man lupaypay no, sa paggawa ng mga bagay na mabuti. No, sometimes, yes, parang napakakapagod na gumawa ng kabutihan. Eh. Especially pag lahat nagko-compromise at kumagawa ng masama. Bakit hindi na tayo makisama? Bakit hindi na tayo makijoy? Pwede na, huwag ka daw mapagod gumawa ng mabuti. Okay? Minsan, parang feeling mo nakakapagod. No? Huwag ka mapapagod. No? Example na lang. Gawin natin sa pambahay. Huwag ka mapapagod maglaba. <laughs> o paglabahan ng iba. Kasi pag napagod ka, ano may nadamit, no? no? Huwag ka mapagod maglinis. Eh, minsan nakakapagod tayo. Pero huwag daw, huwag ka daw mapagod. Huwag ka daw susuko. Huwag ka daw mapagod gumawa ng kabutihan. Why? As just, as just the right time, we will reap a harvest of blessing. Aani daw tayo if we don't give up. Therefore, whenever we have the opportunity, we should do good to everyone, especially to those in the family of faith. When you have an opportunity, kumuha ka daw ng kabutihan. May pangangailangan, iba, meron ka. Give. No? Ikaw na mag-initiate. No? Bro, ano Gcash mo? Sis, padala ako dyan. No, yun nga, huwag daw tayo mapagod gumawa ng kabutihan. Encourage sa isa't isa. Okay? In, in the Nasby version, no, let us not lose heart in doing good. Do not lose heart. Huwag pang hinaan ng puso. For in due time, we will reap if we do not grow weary. Yun nga, aani tayo. Amen? No, in Psalms 39 verse 4 to 6, no, I just put this in my notes, no? Lord, remind me how brief my time on earth, sabi ng psalmist. Remind me how my brief my time on earth will be. Remind me that my days are numbered, how fleeting my life is. You have made my life no longer than the width of my hand. My entire lifetime is just a moment to you. At best, each of us but a breath. We are merely moving in shadows and all, and all our busy rushing ends in nothing. We heap up wealth not knowing how we will spend it. So, minsan ganun daw nangyari, no? We heap up wealth not knowing how to spend it. In another psalm, sabi to Lord, teach us to number our days so that we may apply our hearts to wisdom. And that's why, you know, look, look for opportunities to do good. Number three, encourage to invest in our eternal home. Okay? Let us be reminded, this, this is not our home. We are not home yet. We are not home. Okay? Matthew chapter 6, verse 19 to 20, 21. No? Do not store up treasures here on earth where moths eat them and rust destroys them and where thieves break in and steal. Store your treasures in heaven where moths and rust cannot destroy and thieves do not break in and steal. And wherever your treasure is there, your hearts will be also. Okay. You know, 
No, let us be reminded that we are just passing through this world. This is not our home. Okay? I remember si uh, Pastor Edmund Chan talks about no, sin- sino daw dito, for example, pag nag-hotel ka. Okay? Pumibili ka ba ng mga gamit? Tapos, ni, no? Pinapag, sino dito, pu- nag- nag-stay ka sa hotel, tapos ni-renovate mo, pinaganda mo, binila mo ng carpet. And, and probably you're saying, no, who's gonna do that? Why are you not going, why, why is it that nobody does that? Because the hotel is not your home, right? You don't try to improve the hotel. You don't try to buy stuff for the hotel. That's not your home. You're simply passing through. It is crazy to, no? <laughs> it is a crazy idea to even spend for the hotel. Di ba? Papagandahin mo, ayusin mo, bibili ka na upuan, no? Hindi. Bakit? Kasi hindi mo bahay yun eh. Ano, ano pinag-iipunan mo? Ano pinapaganda mo yung bahay mo? Doon ka nag-iipun. Well, hindi ito bahay natin. No? In the message translation, look at 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 11, the message translation. Friends, this world is not your home. So don't make yourselves cozy in it. Don't indulge your ego at the expense of your soul. Number four, encourage to stick together. Not only are we encouraged to do good, not only are we encouraged to invest in our eternal home, eh, but we are encouraged to stick together. Eh? Hebrews chapter 10, verse 24 to 25. And really, this verse is in the context of the second coming. Look at this. Sabi po dito, let us think of ways to motivate one another, you know, to motivate an- another to acts of love and good works. And let us not neglect our meeting together. Don't neglect the meeting together. Don't neglect coming to church. Yun na nga, eh, virtual na tayo, ini-skip mo pa. No. no. As some people do. But encourage one another, especially now, that the day of His return is drawing near. Hey. I know it's hard for us to come together. All the more, we should not. No, We should not uh, miss on this opportunity of coming to church and being with each other. Don't just watch this on a replay. Yes, of course, I know you can. Maybe if you're busy, but no, that's why ako, no, I, we try to do this. We don't, we, no, this is, by the way, we are broadcasting live. No, we, we want this experience with you together. No, in the Passion Translation, this is not the time to pull away. Don't pull away and neglect meeting together as some have formed the habit of doing. Yung iba, naging habit na lang nila yun eh. Okay? If, they want to, if they don't want to attend, they will not attend. If they have time, they will attend. No, that's, not, that's a bad habit. Why? Because we need each other. How many of you agree with that? We need each other. So, ano in encourage dito? Let's encourage to, what? Yun nga, to stick with each other, not to pull away. No, in fact, we should come together even more frequently, eager to encourage and urge each other onward as we anticipate the day dawning. No? There's this other song by Stephen Curtis Chapman, no? yung together, no? In the in, in the second line of uh, the second uh, line of, of that that song, sabi niyo, basahin ko lang, we've climbed the mountains higher than wherever in our hopes and plans. We've held onto each other's hands. Watch miracles unfold together. And we've crawled on our hands and knees through valleys cold and dark and deep. Sometimes not even sure if we can make it out alive together. Doon tayo sa reality na nakita ko nga yung song na yun, yung lyrics. We're not even sure if we're gonna make it alive together. But then, let's keep on being together. Sabi dito, if not, it wasn't for God's mercy and His grace, there's no way we would be standing in this place. But because he has been faithful every step along the way, here we are together. Finally, number five. Encourage. The last encouragement. Encourage to be always ready. In other words, always be ready. Technically, nobody knows the time or the hour. People can try to predict it. No? But even Jesus tells us that only the Father knows. Sometimes I find it 
no interesting as to people no busy themselves trying to predict when Jesus is coming nobody knows when he is coming but what he tells us is that we should always be ready all the time be ready with what no be ready in terms that when he comes we are actually working doing the work of the Lord Matthew chapter 24 verse 42 to 46 Jesus was talking about the end times here Samia, therefore be alert now be watchful be alert be aware since you don't know the day your Lord is coming hindi ibig sabihin ito maging planning mga kala makakating na sa Lord no 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 ganda nito eh sabi nito but know this if the homeowner had known what time the thief was coming he would have stayed alert and not let his house be broken into verse 44 this is why you're also to be ready because the Son of Man is coming at an hour you do not expect. Who then is a faithful and wise servant whom his master has put in charge of his household to give them food at the proper time? Verse 46. Blessed is the servant whom the master finds doing his servant, no, whom the master finds doing his job when he comes. Kaling. Blessed is thou the man that when his master comes, he is actually found, working, faithful, doing the work of the Lord, doing the work of his master. We can't really tell for sure whether Jesus is coming now or maybe later. What I know is this. He is coming. Is it going to be now? Is it going to be tomorrow? Is it going to be next year? Is it going to be 10, 20, or 30 years more? I don't know. What I know is coming. And what we need to do is, we need to be ready. That when He comes, you know, we will be what? We will be found faithful. Faithful in what? Faithful in knowing Him and making Him known. I'd like to close with a story that I read from an article of no John Piper no and uh, he he tells a story in May of 2017 no? Sabi niya dito, three weeks ago we got a word at our church that Ruby Ruby Eliasson and Laura Edwards had both been killed in Cameroon sino tong si Ruby so Ruby no was a lady 80 years old single all her life never been married she poured her life for one great thing to make Jesus Christ known among the unreached, the poor, and the sick no, in, the, in the country of Cameroon. No? Si Laura was a widow, a medical doctor, pushing eight years old, maging 80 na rin, and serving Rub at Ruby's side at Cameroon. Both of them were basically missionaries. They were workers for the Lord. Okay. What happened was, one day they were, you know, they were driving and the brakes gave way. In other words, nawala sila ng preno and they went over the cliff. In an instant, they died. They died in a car accident. Killed instantly. John Piper asked the people, was that a tragedy? Two lives driven by one great vision spent in unheralded service to the perishing poor for the glory of Jesus Christ. Two decades after almost all their American counterparts have retired to throw their lives away on the trifles of Florida or New Mexico. In other words, in beautiful posh resorts. No. That is not a tragedy. That is glory. Parang sometimes you think, that doesn't make sense. These are two women who serve the Lord and just like that, no? they, they lost brakes and were killed instantly on a car accident. And some people might think that will be that is tragic. Pero sabi no, no, that's not tragedy. That is glory. Because when they came home, when they died, they were actually working the work of the Lord. Blessed is the man that when the master comes, or when the master calls him home, he finds his servants doing. No? John Piper says, I tell you what is tragedy. No, I'll read from you, I'll read to you from Reader's Digest what a tragedy is. Bob and Penny took early retirement from their jobs in the Northeast five years ago. Bob was 59 and uh, Penny was 51. 
they live in Punta Gorda, Florida. That's a beautiful place in, in, in the U.S. No? Where they cruise on their 30-foot trawler. They have their own yacht. They have their own ship. Playing softball and collecting shells. And you might think, like, that's beautiful. But Piper said, that's a tragedy. People today are spending billions of dollars or pesos to persuade you to embrace the tragic dream. Okay. But I want to tell you this, don't buy that. No, that's not the goal of life. In fact, that's a great waste. Okay. Don't waste your life. No. Jesus is coming and He's coming soon. But we don't have to be fearful. We don't have to be afraid. In fact, we can be encouraged with this reality. Encouraged you know, to persevere. Encouraged to do good. Encouraged to stick it out with one another. Huwag ta- kang bibitaw. Kailangan mo church. No? Sabi ko nga, isa sa pinakamasakit na mangyari ngayon sa isang tao is, ano ba't maraming tao takot sa COVID? Hindi yun. Takot magkasakit at takot mamatay eh. Yung takot na mag-suffer alone. Bakit may mga tao hindi na sinasabi na may COVID sila? Kasi natatakot sila, nakukunin sila in isolation. And then I think that's, that's probably one of the scariest thing to happen for somebody to suffer in isolation. Much more die in isolation. And that is where the church comes in. No? You don't have to be alone. You don't have to be isolated. We are here. The body of Christ standing for each other and praying for each other. No, and that's what we have been doing. No, yes, it's true. No, that the, the, the virus is affecting a lot of people, even within the church. But then you you see the love and, and the, the support and praying for each other, crying out. No, in comfort, dun sa mga mga namatayan, comforting one another. No, may I encourage you? Don't don't pull away. Stick with us. Stick with each other. As the day approaches, I encourage you to be faithful for the Lord is faithful. I want us to pray. Father, we just want to thank you, God, for your word. I pray, Lord God, that as we look forward to that day, we look forward to our to your coming that you would open our eyes Lord God in excitement in anticipation of you coming Lord to see you Lord in your glory Lord I pray that we, Lord we, we will we will see ourselves Lord God advancing doing your work telling people about you your reality especially now that people are dying without hope Lord we pray that we will have the boldness and the courage to tell people to tell those who are getting sick to tell those that yes they might just slip into Lord into death Lord God that that there is that there is you that you're real that you died for them on the cross in the name of Jesus in Jesus name I'd like to pray for you, for those of you who are just feeling hopeless. Maybe you have lost a loved one and you're just feeling discouraged and down. There's, a, there's going to be a great reunion one day. But those who die in Christ, we will see them again. And I pray that right now the Lord will just comfort you. Father, I pray, Lord God, for those people that have suffered the loss of a loved one. Yung marami sa amin, Lord God, maybe even nangungulila. Maybe some of us have lost loved ones, Lord, three, five years ago, even ten years ago, but still deep inside, Lord God, we miss our loved ones so much, Lord. Thank you, Lord, because we know that we could, we will be able to see them once again one day. In Jesus' name. And Lord, I pray comfort, Lord, dun sa mga namatayan ngayon. Lord, I pray, Lord God, for those people who are just feeling hopeless and about to give up. Maybe you feel like you just want to give up on your faith. Maybe things doesn't make sense. It does not have to make sense. You just have to trust the Lord. Kapatid, don't give up. Don't end your life. Maybe some of you are just thinking of ending your life. Don't you end your life. Don't you quit. 
Don't you quit. Persevere. Maybe some of you have isolated yourself from the church. Maybe you've been hurt. Maybe, maybe you feel that we've hurt you. And, and right now, I just want you to know that you know, you know, we, don't, we don't want you to leave. We, we, don't, you know, we, we care about you. And, and you don't have to go. Let's, let's stick this out together. Together. Even as we see the day approach. And finally, church, destiny, let's, let's be faithful. No, na pag dumating si Lord, o pag tinawag niya tayo, pag dumating yung araw na yun, na it's our time. Huwag naman sana na mamatay ka dahil namatay ka habang nagdodota ka lang o nagmo-mobile legends. No? Huwag naman sana mamatay ka dahil no? walang, walang kakwenta-kwenta. Kung mamatay ka, alam mo na you are busy with, with doing what God has called you to do. You're knowing Him. You're making Him known. And if today you haven't given your life to Jesus, maybe some of you are, this is your first time listening to us, I want to invite you right now to surrender your life to Jesus Christ. Jesus is not a religion. Alam ko, most of us are familiar with religion, being born here in the Philippines, but I'm not talking about religion, I'm talking about the reality of Jesus Christ. And Jesus loves you so much, and He can change you, He can set you free. If you want to give your life to Jesus right now, I want you to pray with me. Pray this prayer with me right now. Lord Jesus, go ahead, pray this prayer with me. Lord Jesus, today, Lord, I come before you and I ask forgiveness for all my sins. Go ahead, tell the Lord, Lord, sorry. Sorry, Lord. Sorry for all my wrongdoings. Sorry for my mistakes. Sorry, Lord God, na lumayo ako sa iyo. Sorry, naging pasaway ako. Forgive me, Lord. And today, I surrender my life to you. I receive you as Lord and Savior over my life. And starting today, I will follow you, Lord. In Jesus' name. Amen. Can we just respond to the Lord with this song? Let's just sing this song. Brother EJ, can you lead us in worship?
like to break bread with everyone. No, today is the first uh, Sunday of uh, the month. And every first Sunday of the month, we celebrate the Lord's Supper. No? And so, uh, can I invite everyone to grab a piece of bread and a cup of uh, uh, wine or grape juice no? as we celebrate the Lord's Supper? The night Jesus was betrayed, no? you know, he broke bread and said, no, he broke bread and said, this is my body which I'm giving to you. Now do this in remembrance of me. And, and what Jesus was saying this, no, he, he was saying that that bread represented his very life that was being given up for everyone in the world. Sabi sa Bible, no? For God so loved the world that he gave his son that whosoever believes on him will not perish but have everlasting life. And so Jesus tells us, no? to do this in order to be reminded of what Jesus has done for us. And so right now, as we break bread, two things that we need to be reminded about. First, what Jesus has done for us. In Revelation chapter 12, 11, 11, 12, no? one of my favorite verses, and they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb. In other words, no, they overcame Satan, the saints overcame Satan by the blood of the Lamb, by what Jesus did on the cross. No? by the word of their testimony and they love not their lives until the end okay. praise God because we can overcome through what Jesus has done for us on the cross no? he gave us his body so that we can be overcomers but not only that no, the second thing is we are breaking bread no, as a church to be reminded that we are covenanted with each other no? church is not perfect destiny is not perfect no I have a lot of flaws. You have a lot of flaws. But that doesn't mean we are to give up on each other. We are one body in Christ. And we are covenanted with each other. Right now, let's partake of the bread, remembering God's covenant with us and our covenant with one another. After supper, Jesus took the cup and says, This is my blood which I'm giving to you. As often as you eat this bread and drink the cup, you celebrate the Lord's coming. You're reminded of the Lord's coming until He finally comes. And that is what we do. Every time we do this, we, we anticipate that. We're reminded that God is coming. Jesus is coming. We're excited about that fact. Let us drink. Lord, we thank you. Thank you for your life. Thank you for your body. Thank you for the blood that was shed for us on the cross. We remember what you have done for us and we remember our covenant of love with each other. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You're watching Destiny Church. If you would like to check more resources or donate to this ministry, you can download the Destiny Church PH official app or log on to www.destinychurch.org.ph.